here is the Brexit Trump review. <clears throat> As the whole kind of Trump thing has had a chance to settle down and we appear to be making kind of inroads to the whole Brexit situation and as much as it amazes me to say this um, the fact that we have Theresa May going for the hard Brexit route I, I am absolutely buzzing about that I think if she holds her nerve and she's got the balls to carry this through which I, I actually think she does you know Theresa May has had the comparisons with Thatcher made. That was blatantly obvious. That was always going to happen. The difference is, Thatcher was always, she was always very good at manipulating political opinion to suit the context of her situation. She was fantastic at that. She she taught politics about spin way before Alistair Campbell even conceived of the idea. One of my biggest fears about Brexit was the fact that no matter what anybody voted for, they weren't going to get. They weren't going to get what they, they 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 were hoping to. The Remainers, obviously, by losing the referendum, weren't going to get what they wanted. And the hard Brexiteers like myself, who wanted a complete breakaway. Um, weren't going to get what they wanted because we were fairly confident we were going to get some <coughs> watered down kind of oh, I, I'm not going to say Norwegian approach because that's, that's, that's not right but my biggest thing was the fact that for this to work economically we had to be out of the single market and for all of these individuals on the Remain side who were kind of propagating this fear of, you know, economic disaster and the fact that if we were to vote exit, you know, the world would end, Beelzebub would rise and we'd be eating babies within a week, you know. I was desperate, desperate to see these Muppets shown for the liars that they were. I think the interesting fact already we now have more countries wanting exclusive trade deals with the UK than we actually have within the European Union on the current stance. And the only way that these can work as an economic advantage to the UK is for us to be outside of the single market. As much as we might dislike Nigel Farage, and you know, I don't align myself with Nigel Farage at the best of times, however, I can respect a guy, like I've said before, who <laughs> sets out with a belief and a vision and sticks with that until he achieves his objective. I think that was amazing. I really do. Um, do I believe that Nigel Farage is some misogynistic racist like Trump? You know, it's very easy for the media to make these accusations and manipulate uh, various pieces of evidence and take them out of context, exactly the same way that's been done with Donald Trump. But the fact are, Theresa May has said, you know, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it the right way. We're going to we're going to go and be as independent as is humanly possible. And I'm I'm really really pleased about this. Um, part of this whole problem was lots of people that voted in the referendum didn't probably really understand a how the European Union worked. B, what we originally voted to join in the first place, C, where the European Union is going, and D, the complexity of global economics, which is incredibly difficult to understand at the best of times. Uh, my best friend, a guy who I share very, very many opinions with, um, we do stand in the same corner, however, he is a lot more about Truly playing the devil's advocate route, you know, really kind of playing that ultra pragmatic approach to any problem. Whereas for me, you know, I look at the 2008 economic crash and think, you know what, fuck America, let them fucking sink. You know, yes, there would be global pain for everybody if the petrodollar was to collapse, the American economy. 
economy was to collapse, but it wouldn't spell global economic disaster. We would find a way to get out of the problem. Now, as it stands, we have a great deal of countries kind of queuing up wanting uh, these exclusive trade deals and specific individual trade deals per country, which is fantastic. One of the first was Germany, you know, and if you look at um, the demographic and, and regional splits of German vehicles, their biggest export market by far is the UK. Um, I believe I'm right in saying that the UK buys more German branded vehicles than any other European country. Germany, in fact, are one of the first countries when the Brexit vote became confirmed were like, right, fuck Article 50, we're not interested in that. What we want to do is establish and, and maintain this trade route for a huge part of our, our manufacturing output. I think the Trump debate at the minute, and he, I know he's, he's recently done an interview with Michael Gove and he was very much on uh, discussing the importance of getting a trade deal negotiated and established in principle during the, 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 the negotiating process after Article 50 has been triggered. Um, and of course, of course, the pragmatic, the intelligent and the cynical will share the view that Donald Trump, his first and foremost uh, priority is a deal that is going to be in America's best interest first and foremost. Of course that's going to be the case. You don't have to be a fucking political genius to work that out. But that doesn't automatically mean that it's a bad situation for the UK. But you take someone else's selfish agenda and you use it to your advantage. It's not rocket science. You know, and the fact of the matter is, if you consider the North American market and Canada, which would obviously play a part in any trade deal that we do with the US, um, although they're separate com countries, obviously, the, the, there's there's the trickle-down effect. There's the supply market in any, you know, as a good example, uh, Longbridge. You know, when Longbridge shut down, the, the, the supply chain for that area was massively affected. But that's true in the opposite direction. So, here we are. Um, Theresa May sat out of stall, and, and like I say, for me, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I hope we get what she's saying. Because for the, the, the situation to work, for the process to work, and for exiting the European Union to benefit us in the best long-term solution, both sociol from a sociological viewpoint and an economical viewpoint, we need to leave the single market. She appears to be going down that route. We also get the opportunity to tackle many of the other issues, because the one thing that Europe were going to hold over us was, if you want to stay in the single market, you've got to have open borders. Well, we've taken that uh, negotiating tool away from them. So, this is part one. Next, we're going to go on to how the situation with uh, the US presidential uh, election and the inauguration of Donald Trump is going to have a direct impact on the UK and our exit strategy from the UK, uh, from the European Union. Catch you in a minute.